Uh, why did the Presbyterian church early on not use instruments? Why did the early Catholic church not use instruments? Why did the Lutheran church at one point in time not use instruments? Why did Methodists at one point in time not use uh, instruments? And a lot of people who don't even know that. And it's interesting to me, you go back and you read some of the old commentaries, the ones done in like the 1800s and early 1900s from certain denominational figures. They were a lot closer in thinking to how you and I are today. And uh, thats I don't think that's the case nowadays. So I've shared this information in, in past um, sermons, um, but I think it's worth a, a quick uh, review. So these are the words here of John Calvin, and he's the founder of the Presbyterian denomination. And these come from his commentary. You know, Calvin was a very studious man. I don't agree with a lot of things he said, but there's, he, I'll give him credit where credit is due. He's very studious. He wrote an entire commentary on the whole Bible, so including the Psalms. So, and you can find this online for free. It's so old, it's in the public domain, right? So these are his comments from his own commentary on Psalm 33. And you can Google this and find, the, if you want to read the whole, the whole uh, commentary on Psalm 33, it's worth reading. He said, when they frequent their sacred assemblies, musical instruments and celebrating the praises of God would be no more suitable than the burning of incense, the lighting up of lamps, and the restoration of the other shadows of the law. The papists, therefore, have foolishly borrowed this, as well as many other things, from the Jews. End quote. So here he's talking about Christians during his time, specifically papists, that's referring to the Roman Catholic Church, and how them using instruments makes as much sense as us lighting lamps and burning incense and offering animal sacrifices and doing other things found in the law of, of Moses. Um, and again, he says they've, they've borrowed this and many other things from the Jews. These are, again, things that pertain to the Jewish faith that are not part of the Christian faith is the idea. Um, these are the words of Martin Luther, the, the famous reformer, the famous Protestant. The Lutheran church is named after him. He said, the organ in worship is an ensign of Baal. The Roman Catholic borrowed it from the Jews. Uh, these are the words of John Wesley, again, the founder of the Methodist Church. And his is somewhat comical. I like his. He says, I have no objection to the organ in our chapels as long as they're neither seen or heard. So there you go. That, that's, that was his view on musical instruments being used in, in the Methodist Church. Hey, there's no problem with them. As long as you never see him or hear him, right? Um, Adam Clark, another well-known man in the Methodist denomination. And again, he also wrote a commentary on the Bible. And it's quite a good one. I like Clark's commentary. Now, you've got to be careful if you read it. But I think by and large, it's pretty good. And uh, Clark was fiercely opposed to the use of instruments of music um, in Christian worship. He says this, and I quote, I farther believe that the use of such instruments of music in the Christian church is without the sanction and against the will of God, they, uh, that they are subversive of the spirit of true devotion and that they are sinful. And he goes on and says this, music as a science I esteem and admire, but instruments of music in the house of God I abominate and abhor this is the abuse of music. And here I register my uh, protest against all such corruptions in the worship of the author of Christianity. Um, and again, I believe this man and several others I mentioned, they lived before, I know Luther for sure, and Calvin, <laughs> and I believe Clark as well. They lived before the restoration movement in America. So again, these are not members of the Church of Christ in the United States saying, hey, you need to stop using instruments. These are men before that movement took place in America. Men from these different denominations saying this themselves. Um, Charles Spurgeon, in my opinion, one of the most well-known Baptist preachers in the world. People will call him the Prince of Preachers, right? And he said, I would as soon pray to God with machinery as sing to God. 
with machinery. So again, let me ask you again, why these denominations, uh, early on at least, uh, and I know it wasn't true for all Baptists, but at least for his Baptist congregation, why for some early Baptists, early Catholics, early Methodists, early Lutherans, why did they not use instruments? I think that's a more important question. And, uh, well, again, they've, they pretty much answered it. It's not part of the New Testament. Yes, it's part of the Old Testament, clearly. Jews did use them. But Jews did a lot of things that we're not told to do as Christians, right? They sacrificed animals. That's, you know, one obvious difference. Um, you know, if a Methodist living today in 2024 could go back in time about 200 years and attend a Methodist congregation, that person would probably think it was a completely different church. And regarding the use of musical instruments, the Church of Christ stands out today because we did not change. Everyone else did. And again, if you go back far enough in time, there are plenty of denominations that did not use them. And I'd say we should just go all the way back in time to the first church that we read about. And again, there's absolutely no evidence in the New Testament that Christians worship using harps and trumpets and timbrels and the kinds of things that, again, we do read about in Judaism. But we do not find that regarding the, uh, the, Christian, the Christian faith. Um, over and over again, the New Testament instructs us to sing to God. There is not one verse in the New Testament which mentions, again, a harp or so on, as I, as I just said. Um, so again, just one quick example. Um, Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So again, if you look up references to um, praise, singing as a form of worship in the New Testament, that's what we're told to do over and over again. Sing. Sing and play are not the same thing. Right? People try to conflate them. Oh, singing means we bust out the guitar and we sing Kumbaya. Right? Well, we can sing Kumbaya, but again, it, playing the guitar, that's adding something. That's adding a new element to worship that we do not find um, in the New Testament. So, um, again, that would be... My answer, why does the Church of Christ not use instruments? The same reason all the early denominations, even though, again, we don't believe we're a denomination, but the same reason all those other early groups did it. Because, to, again, to use Clark's words, there's no sanction for it. It's a corruption. It's something that people have tried to carry over from the Jewish faith. 